minutes behind from our agenda, and we're about to begin with free speech. Um, so, Fox time, if everyone would like to seat themselves, and um, we will call for hands, people who would like to speak at this time. Question, yeah, the question. Do we change the announcements and the clock time around? Yeah, I believe that's been changed for a couple weeks. Um, I believe so, yes. Um, we'll have announcements after the first So we have the first day of the party. that they allege to protest, and not everyone in the group, but that the group as a whole is, is operating as a standard operating procedure, just like the institutions that they allege to protest. Um, the rules aren't applied equally. Um, when people are documenting this, um, as it's happening, uh, there is absolutely no recourse, and specific accusations would be that towards me and other people, not just me, but including me, the rules are not applying equally. And then what I do is I go through the process, which is to alert people like Chris or people like Bentley as these things are happening to document, to show that within the process there's no way to have a voice when there are people who are running the meeting that are intentionally targeting certain people. And that's happening lots, and there was a much larger collective block earlier addressing this same subject back at Monroe Park with probably twice the number of people that are actually at the meeting blocking the meeting. So I want to point that out. And recently, like I said, this institution or this body behaved exactly like the institutions they protest by having a false accusation thrown out, having no charges against the person, having just vague accusations, and not even having the person there to deny the lies that were being spread around, and then convicting them, and then having them kicked out. And then later on that week, with a straight face, going in front of the federal courthouse and protesting the government for passing a bill that states it has the ability to do the exact same thing, which is to give somebody a trial in abstentia, to convict somebody with no real charges. And that to me is just, I mean, it's, it's unacceptable. And when it seems like these things are coming out the most is when the truth about how the government functions is stated in a clear manner and in the media. When I stated after Megan Neal gave a speech in front of the Federal Reserve Bank where she said, oh, this came from Chris Dorsey, 
And I stated, I, I'm moved to extend then. Okay. Thank you, Roger. So, at that point, when, 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 when Megan Neal stated that she was repeating a speech that I wrote, and then I said that the same thing, and then somebody gets up, accuses me of being a Nazi, when I just simply state how the international banking structure works, and then says one person said one thing and another person said the other, when, when clearly we were saying the exact same thing, and the person who preceded me, Megan Neal, said, oh, this came from Chris Dorsey. Then when I questioned this man, he attacked me in front of dozens of people and some people sitting in this room, and they remained quiet. I don't care. That's fine. That's par for the course. Everybody, if they want to be serious about protesting, has to grow some thick skin and realize we're up against, like, serious things, and it's not a little high school clique. But... What I'm also saying is that when I'm threatened continuously and members of the group have known about this and they've kept quiet about it and then they see people directly threaten me and then attack me and then do nothing, like, what, what good are the rules? This is supposed to be nonviolent. I mean, I agree to those rules. I didn't do anything. But in front of everyone, I get attacked and nobody says anything. That's fine. That's okay. But then... I'm the one that's targeted for saying things that there's really no proof of. I mean, the false accusations about people stating that I started Occupy the Hood as a front organization to embezzle money from Occupy Richmond. There are people that, in this room that started that rumor. I don't even have a bank account. You know? Like, like uh, or that I'm making up false rumors when I'm making direct accusations <coughs> against people, or I'm having people follow me around Canal Plaza while I'm just strolling around, and Teddy Parham with a camera in our face, like, or people, individuals in this room just kind of following <laughs> us around wherever we go and getting up in personal spaces. I mean, I've seen this kind of stuff before. I've seen it from the Democratic Party. I've seen it from the Richmond Police, I've seen it from the Richmond City Council, I've seen it from the Richmond Times Dispatch, and now I've seen it from an alleged opposition group. What a joke. So, I will be down protesting at the state capitol and protesting any place else that the institutions that control the U.S. government and control our society are operating, and I see a lot more people sitting in a meeting than out there actually doing that. And a lot of people, I'll, I'll, I'll finish with this, a lot of people, when I was out there by myself, not with the Tea Party people, and not with the Democrats inside, but protesting Barack Obama, I know a lot of you were not protesting coal, you know, subsidizing the coal industry to nearly a trillion dollars, or subsidizing war crimes. You were supporting the criminals. So, continue to do that and continue to roll on down the river and thank you very much and I'm out of here and this is a joke. It is an absolute joke. Thank you, Chris. Goodbye, Chris. I'm not going anywhere. I gotta come back and pick up Teddy. I'm picking up Teddy when, when the meeting's over, so just give me a call. But I'm saying I'll be out protesting while everybody is in here meeting. David, I'll, be back. I'll see y'all when I pick up Teddy. There are a lot of things that weigh on my mind. Many of you know uh, and know me. Um, I'm one of my professors is a minister. And the single mandate of Christianity is compassion. It is love. That's the whole sole purpose. Christianity. That's it. And I think that goes along with the vision and the purpose that many of you have here. I want to tell you a little bit about my vision and give you an image of that vision. Because I tell you, I know there are things going on tonight in this country. I don't want you to envision for me a four and a half year old blonde girl with ponytails out of both sides of her head with a pink ribbon in one and a purple one in the other, 
with an orange jumper with a butterfly in front, on a spotted shirt, rainbow leggings, and sparkly tennis shoes. And she holds in her hand a teddy bear. And she looks at her father who holds a piece of paper in his hand. And with innocent eyes and pure heart, she looks at him and she says, Daddy, what's wrong? Because she sees a concerned look on his face. And he looks at his princess and he can't bring himself to tell her that this piece of paper is an eviction notice because his house was foreclosed by the bank. Because he's been unemployed for two years and couldn't support the mortgage. Because, and he can't explain to her why her mother died last year because they didn't have insurance and she couldn't get the medical care that she needed. And he couldn't explain to her why she can't have ballet classes anymore. And I want to bring the banking executives to that little girl and I want them to explain to her why their profits are more important than her having a house. And I want the government to look at that girl in the eyes and tell her why they have to spend trillions of dollars on bombs and bullets to protect oil interests. Now I want the oil companies to explain why they have to make so much profit and she has to live on the street. And one of these days, <coughs> if I meet that little girl, I want to be able to look at her in the eye and say, you're going to be all right. Because I'm fighting and we're fighting for you. There are people here that want to take care of you. Because you are more important than those bombs and bullets. You are more important than the oil companies, and you deserve ballet class. And I want us to keep that vision in mind, because that's what we're about. And I don't want anybody or anything to upset that vision. And I want nothing to come out of this but compassion and love and direction for that little girl, for the single moms out here trying to support maybe three or other more children on part-time jobs, trying to keep their children out of trouble because the government will not fund the things that they need when they have a $17 trillion economy. It's sinful. It is wrong. And I will no longer tolerate this society, and I will no longer be part of it, but I will be part of this movement when we keep ourselves directed, keep our vision on that little girl, and keep our vision on the things that matter, and whatever happens here tonight and in the future, let's not get derailed. Let's keep our vision and let's keep our sight on those children and the innocent people in Afghanistan, Iraq, and other places that have been killed because of our backwards policies that serve these corporate thoughts. <laughs> Outside of the Omni Hotel at 12th and Carey. They're going to have bagpipers and a casket and a coffin, and it's about the a funeral for mountaintops. And I hope that uh, you will be able to attend this. Five to six. Um, and I also wanted to mention February 4th is a national day of action. Um, no war against Iran. No interference, no intervention, no assassinations, no sanctions. Um, if you, um, half a million Iraqi children died underneath the sanctions that the United States government and others um, provided to the Iraqis. So um, that's the National Day of Action, February 4th, Federal Courthouse, 7th and uh, Broad. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Alan. <coughs> we have come to thought we can't turn around. We'll flood the 
streets with justice, we are freedom bound. We are freedom up. We have come to We can't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice, we are freedom bound. We are come to far, we can't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice. With justice, we are freedom bound. We have come to far, we can't go down. We'll flood the streets with justice, we are freedom bound. We have come to far, we can't turn around. We'll flood the streets with justice, we are freedom bound. Have come too far, we can't turn round. We'll flood the streets with justice, we are freedom bound. We have come too far, we can't turn round. We'll flood the streets with justice, we are freedom bound. We have come too far, we can't turn round. We'll flood the streets with justice. If you call me 
and you don't have any heat, or you need a stove, your children, your parents, Teddy won't come through. Now, some of the people in this organization have done nothing but themselves. This is the first big thing they've done. Well, congratulations. I've been doing it all my life. But I don't understand how you can sit in a place, and this is a place of God. Some of you all don't want to give a moment of silence. Some of you all don't believe in a higher power. Okay? But this thing is bigger than you. And my thing is this. The God that I learned about and read about in my Bible, he doesn't take cowards. He wants strong warriors. If you see something wrong, if you see a woman being attacked sexually, work on it. Help her. Don't tell her to hide it. Don't tell her to say nothing. It's too many women in this organization that need protection. Thank you. I just want you to know I'm not going anywhere. You can blog, clog, anything you want to. I'm in it for life. Like I said the other night, give me liberty or give me death. And I'm ready to go down just like that. I believe in a miracle for what it should be, not what it is now. We have the power to turn it around. If we can get rid of the nonsense, we can do that together. Thank you. Thank you, Teddy. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just had um, two comments. The first was that I just wanted to thank everyone who came out for the city council chamber meeting on Friday for free speech. Um, there were some very powerful, moving comments made, and I'm very grateful for all the speakers and the organizers, and to Marty Jewell, for putting that together. So I thank everyone for that. <coughs> Second is that yesterday I had the pleasure of attending the retreat for the Richmond Teachers for Social Justice. It's loosely affiliated with RPEC, and I have never felt so hopeful about our educational system um, before. But it was a wonderful morning and afternoon of brainstorming, um, exchanging ideas, planning. And I think it's pretty clear after those hours of spending um, uh, quality time and brainstorming and, and, and really envisioning with 15 other people that I think Occupy, Occupy the Hood, Occupy the Dream all have a place um, with the Richmond Teachers for Social Justice. So I just wanted to put that on your radar. I'll hopefully be getting more information to everyone, and just please keep a lookout for it on the Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you for that. We have, do, do we have anybody else who would like to speak during free speech? <coughs> Harry? Um, this is just real quick. Uh, some of you know that I am a, a very active Special Olympics person. Um, to be exact, I'm the uh, so, or assistant uh, coordinator of the Houston County Special Olympics. We need bodies this coming Saturday. And, um, I'm not going to tell you that you can't wear your uh, Occupy memorabilia uh, and whatnot, but if you do uh, and it becomes a hubbub, it's a school that I'm going to have to say sorry. But hopefully that won't happen because nobody will object. Um, with that said, I'd like to give you the times and dates uh, of that uh, in just a second. Okay. This coming Saturday, registration time is <coughs> registered to be a volunteer. is at 1230. Uh, um, refing and scorekeeping trainings will be uh, happening at 1 o'clock. It's at the Gushland High School, which literally you take Patterson, you go west. About 45 minutes, you'll see Gushland County uh, High School on the right-hand side. After the second stoplight in Gushland, <laughs> it was actually the first stop, in, first stoplight in Gushland, but as you're going down Patterson, it's the second one you see. Um, anyway, uh, and the games end roughly around seven. Uh, I need roughly 20 people. I'm looking at you guys because I know that you guys care about uh, special needs children just as much as everyone else. And so if you can come and help, we need you. I need people to, you know, take and, and uh, hand out awards. Give the child that gold medal he deserves or she deserves. 
And they're not all children. Um, one of my athletes has actually graduated the year before I did. So we've got adults and children alike. Um, so I probably should be using the term athlete. Um, but that's basically everything. Uh, if anyone wants to get a hold of me to ask me questions, I will be here until the end of GA, unless things just get really, really hanky and I get upset and just leave. Um, if people would like my phone number for getting a hold of me, please don't put it in here. You already have number. Okay. <laughs> Josh, where are you? Yeah. Is that when it passed the rock for me on Patterson? Um, it is past Luckstone. I don't know about the rock. Uh, I believe there's a rock stone. Yeah, it's just yeah. Okay. yeah, it's about 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, is there anybody else who would like to speak through free speech? All right. Josh. Hello everyone, my name is Josh, thinking of most of your beautiful faces. Um, I just got a phone call from Mark Wilson, does anyone remember him? He was our yes, first yes. champion, no, he's still in. He was our first like comfort champion, he was the one who got all, like, all of our seating bags and sweaters and stuff uh, organized, and he was there bringing us stuff every single day, he was awesome. Um, he's in jail because of a certain medication he was taking, which is really messed up, but he just called me. Um, he wanted me to tell everyone hello, and that he loves and misses everyone. And don't forget about the buses. That was something he wanted me to stress. Don't forget about the buses, because we can't get people anywhere without buses. Um, and I'm just conveying the information. If anyone would like to write him a letter, I'm going to go visit him on Wednesday and bring him stuff. So if anyone wants to write a letter to Mr. Mark Wilson, who was awesome and a totally core part of our inception of Warba, um, please do that. Or if you have any newspaper clippings you're willing to part with, He's been stuck in lockup, so he can't get that stuff, and I would love to deliver it to him. And this is more of an announcement, but he just called, so I wanted to pass on the good vibes. Yay. Thank you, Josh. I don't know if this is the proper This is the proper time. It's free speech. Um, when there was the encampment, I led my uh, chainsaw and helped them gather wood. Then the, the encampment broke up and my chainsaw disappeared. So I'm trying to get my chainsaw, because it's my brother's chainsaw. He does not know it has disappeared. <laughs> so I'm trying to get it. I actually have, I'll, I'll get with you after the meeting. I actually have access to all of our stored stuff. I didn't see a chainsaw and I loaded and unloaded all of the, like basically the entire camp twice. So I don't know if it's there. But we can certainly go to the Lombardy uh, U-Haul and check for it. Okay. Um, great. So, welcome everybody. Uh, I'd like to ask if there's any new people here tonight. I'm here. New. We uh, open the floor to new people if you'd like to say anything. Welcome! Thanks for coming. Um, oh, I'm here. Cool, thanks. Um, and what was your name? Reezy. Alright. Um, we have hand signs that we use here. And so I'll just briefly go over those really quick. Um, this, which you see a lot, is the I like it. Um, this is, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. This is abstain. Stand aside. Stand aside. Sorry. Stand aside. Some people call it on the fence or abstain. Um, this is a clarifying question. Uh, it's used specifically to clarify details um, and what somebody uh, just said. Um, you might see this sign as a point of information, although the clarifying question should go back to the speaker to answer. Other people might have these and be able to provide some information. Um, then we have point of process. Uh, this is for when we're getting off track, when we are off topic and there is something wrong, maybe somebody's been, maybe somebody's misusing one of the other hands, um, or we're just getting really off subject. Uh, this is Mayday. This means 
I can't stand what's going on right now. This is really stressful. Um, I don't like it a lot. It goes to the temp check. Um, who is Nicole? <laughs> and that person may just wish to speak with the temp check one on one, very quietly, or it might be addressed on the floor um, close to you very immediately. Um, this is a block. This means I'm willing to leave the movement if this passes. It's very serious. Um, let's see. Moving along. This is, you know, I feel like I've understood your point. And you might be babbling. Don't take it personally, but let's wrap this up and move it along. Um, this is uh, speak up. Point of information we got. Um, we 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 uh, <laughs> got rid of this one. It was it's not important. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think that's the hand signs. So Did I miss anything? All right. Um, uh, we do have some guidelines here. Um, just as important as using the hand signs correctly uh, and knowing the process is um, respecting each other and respecting the process. I uh, can't say that enough. Just come with respect. Um, consensus uh, voting requires patience and understanding. Um, so please respect each other. Avoid side conversations that distracts people um, from what's, what else is going on. If you miss something, you might want to ask your neighbor in a quiet voice first uh, what's happened. Um, we also practice uh, step up, step back. Um, you might want to cede your voice to new folks uh, who haven't talked a lot. Uh, also, if somebody makes your point, you can step back and, and not speak. Uh, as we're using consensus voting, the goal is not necessarily to hear from every person as much as it is to hear from every opinion. Because um, that's how we come to the strongest uh, collective decision. Um, <coughs> I'm going to introduce the facilitation team. Can, I the can I ask one question? Do we have any of the new pamphlets? The, the Josh? Uh, there are a few in the room. Yeah, there are a few circulating around. We have the opportunity to actually put yeah. out more. Um, facilitation team has created a uh, short guide to the General Assembly process. We have got one more. That pet. Okay. okay. And I did miss something. Um, we use a progressive stack um, when we open the floor uh, for stack. The stackers will call um, on stacks of five people at a time to come up. Um, progressive stack will be used to bring uh, minority voices traditionally, uh, people who have not been heard from or marginalized um, are going to be moved up first. And me and Chris are on stack, so if you wish to be on stack, give us eye contact and we'll call you. <coughs> um, so yeah, Bentley and Chris will be stack. Um, Greg and I will be co-moderating. Uh, Jeremy Scribe. Yeah, uh, we thought it might be a good idea to co-moderate uh, so that there can be one of us in fully engaged um, and one of us on the side to handle other roles, possibly such as temp check, uh, to have their eyes and ears open. Um, and then uh, we might switch back and forth. Um, and is that? And for keeping time, because um, we don't have a time key, but one of us will be keeping time on speakers tonight. Um, and Nicole will be temp check. As you heard before, um, so we'd like to ask uh, the GA's approval for this facilitation team. Uh, if there's any objections, um, any objections? Okay. What's <coughs> four? Um, four is at forty. 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 Excluding facilitation. Forty people. We can forty people. 
40. Could be 40. Why don't we recount for a second? Yeah. Good. Some people are um, that. Yeah. Some people are. choose to, members of the facilitation team can step down uh, if they feel that they can <coughs> continue to uh, participate. And it will be our job to not inject our personal opinions um, and refrain from showing uh, any sort of opinion through hand signs or whatever. Um, let's see, we have the agenda. I guess we are running a little bit behind time. Um, it says 5 p.m. free speech, 5.30 facilitation intro, followed by work group and general announcements. Uh, Six-ish informal proposals, and we have several proposals that are endorsements. Um, I believe those are informal proposals as well. Um, and then 6.45 formal proposals where the goal is adjourning at 8.30. Uh, I'd like to ask the GA's approval of this agenda. It is our intent to stick to this? Might not happen. Any objections? All right, great. Um, so I believe we can begin with uh, work group announcements, and then we'll take more general announcements. 